over a year, that the United States backed a coup to overthrow Pakistan's democratically elected independent nationalist leader, Imran Khan, and installed what is essentially a corrupt puppet regime, which is really just run by the military. Now, what this really shows is that tragically, the United States treats Pakistan as a kind of colony. And Pakistan was previously part of India before independence from British colonialism in 1947. And it was part of the British Empire. It was a colony. And even though in 1947, Pakistan became independent and on paper got independence from European colonialism, today the U.S. exercises neo-colonial control over this country. And again, I need to stress, this is a huge country of more than 230 million people, the fifth most populous country on earth. But it's also a nation that for decades has suffered from nonstop U.S. meddling, which has prevented the country from economically developing, from becoming politically independent, and from really showing its true potential. And this brings us to Imran Khan. Khan governed Pakistan as a nationalist, maintaining a completely independent foreign policy, not subordinating his country to the United States, which historically Pakistan has had this very subservient relationship to Washington. And in fact, in December, he gave a speech saying that Pakistan should not have been allied with the United States during the first Cold War. And today, Pakistan should maintain a non-aligned foreign policy. It always should have been non-aligned and should refuse to support the new Cold War against Russia and China. And I feel that Pakistan should not take any sides. I'm talking about our country. Because, you know, why, why do we have to take sides? Pakistan should have good relationship with both China and with the United States. Uh, similarly, I feel with Russia and, and the United States. For instance, that's the policy of India. I must say that I've always admired the way India remained non-aligned during the Cold War. I thought it was a, a sensible thing to do. I mean, when you become part of a bloc, that means that the whole other bloc is excluded from you. And of course, you know, great powers do put a lot, enormous pressure on you to take sides. So let me first say that China-Pakistan relationship goes back a long time, 60 years. And China has been what we call always a friend in need. China has stood by Pakistan, you know, whether it is on international forums, on politics. For instance, Kashmir is an issue, a United Nations resolution on Kashmir stating that they should be, they should have been a plebiscite in Kashmir for the people of Kashmir to decide whether they wanted to be with India or Pakistan. And that right was not given to them. But no other, hardly any other country stands with us. Uh, China has always stood with us. And I must say, Turkey has stood with us. But you know, other even Muslim countries, despite knowing the, the uh, injustice going on in Kashmir, just like in Palestine, they do not uh, stand with us. Which is, by the way, one of the reasons I feel that when we are told to take sides in, in a conflict like Ukraine, why should we? When things that are important to us uh, the Western countries don't take a stand or moral stand on it. And so I feel that, China, so I think we should be non-aligned in this. We should be neutral. We should be friendly with both. Those words right there succinctly explain why Washington backed this coup against Imran Khan. Not only did he maintain neutrality over the proxy war in Ukraine, but he also deepened Pakistan's alliance with China. Historically, Pakistan and China have been very close allies. So while Yes, Pakistan has also been a U.S. ally. It has also maintained very close political and economic relations with China. And Pakistan plays a very important role in the Belt and Road Initiative, which is Beijing's international infrastructure project. China and Pakistan have created something called the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, which plays a very important geostrategic role with trade routes and railroads that go from China through Pakistan south to the port of Gwadar and out into the Arabian Sea in the Indian Ocean. So Pakistan plays an important geostrategic role in the integration economically of Eurasia. Pakistan is also a member of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, along with China and Russia and India. And Iran just became a full member of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. And speaking of Iran, Imran Khan had also been improving Pakistan's relations with Iran, building trade ties, and publicly Khan condemned the illegal U.S. sanctions on Iran and called on Washington to lift its sanctions on Iran after Donald Trump tore up the nuclear deal, the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action. And by the way, I should point out that Iran not only signed that deal with the U.S., it also signed that deal with the all of the permanent members of the Security Council and the European Union. It was only the U.S. that withdrew from the agreement and imposed sanctions on Iran. So by showing support for Iran in this way, that was another reason that Washington was very angry at Imran Khan. And then there's the issue of Israel-Palestine. The United States has been pressuring countries, Muslim-majority countries like Pakistan, for many years to normalize relations with the Israeli apartheid regime. And Imran Khan 
always refused to do that. He always strongly supported the right of the Palestinian people to self-determination against Western-backed Israeli colonialism. 